Welcome back to the Kiwi Lads channel. We are back for yet another game of the Commonwealth Game 7s. This game, South Africa will be taking on Tonga now. In their first game, South Africa were able to get themselves the victory over Malaysia. In their first game, though, for Tonga, it didn't quite go the way that they were planning. They were defeated by England, or sorry, by Scotland, in fact. But now we get to see these two sides go here, dear. We know it's going to be physical with a good starting lineup for both of these sides. Could end up with a very good start to the match. Sioni Tupo in the starting lineup for Tonga alongside Samasoni Azi, Sunia Aika, Pakalani, Togatea, and also Oseka. Then for South Africa, Grobala, Zane Davids, Ronald Brown, JC Pretorius, Selvin Davids, Soya Zwapi, and Muller Duplessis, who did very nicely indeed in his first match for South Africa in the Blitz box. But now this matchup is just around the corner from getting underway. Anyone who is new, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. The two sides about to make their way out onto the park. And they will be fired up big time to be able to get the opportunity to go out there and show exactly what these two sides can do. Now, South Africa, they were considered as one of the favorite teams to be able to go through and win this competition. So with the side that they've gone with, they have certainly got that ability to be able to go on and do great things. But we will go like this and like this there we go we have got it all set up with the teams next to that one next to this one there we go hope you guys are all doing well sbok has got there the mexican wave as well and also we have got africa from sbok is going for his hometown boys in this contest south africa they will need to start this match well up against malaysia they were a little bit slower getting going than they would have liked but then they started ramping it up to the next slide or next level i should say and given tonga's result against scotland should be a pretty plain sailing for the blitz box. Exactly right. Although you never know in sevens, of course, anything can happen. But for this one, I think I agree with you that it could be South Africa by 24 or so. I think I'm going to give them in this contest. But Selvin David's about to kick us off for the second game for both of these sides in the Birmingham sevens. Kicks it high and kicks it just the 10 metres. Brilliant kickoff from South Africa off the get-go. And now Selvin Davids, he's going to be taken down in a good tackle made by Samasoni Aki. And PJ Power saying the best version of the World Cup theme song. World and Union says this box is kicking him behind. And now Sawyer's Wapi will be testing out his toe and he's certainly going to be winning that foot race. It sits up for him. And South Africa scoring 21 seconds. That is the dream start to this contest for the South Africans. And it's none other than Savue Sawyer's Wapi who does get them underway with their first try. It's a great kick in behind. From Muller Duplessis, he has been playing very well throughout the sevens competition, which is pretty promising for South Africa because he's probably not one of those names we normally say plenty of times. Normally it's JC Pretorius, Christy Grobala as those guys who are real impact players. But for me, Muller Duplessis being one of the best players for the blitz box throughout the sevens competition so far. And also Tonga, I like England, decent union side, very decent league side, and an ask great view of a sevens side. See Sebastian there. That kick is just short and just to the right. So it will make the score now 5 0 in favor of South Africa. Now, the last thing that South Africa will want is to allow Tonga to get anywhere near back into this contest. What we will quickly do. So we will go like this and this. There we go. Just making sure we were all going smoothly because I have got a video exporting at the same time as this live stream is going. It is our review. That's a knock on, or in fact, it becomes a penalty in favor of South Africa. Selvin Davids wasn't quite on the mark. So isn't allowed to take that one quickly. Ronald Brown instead. We'll look. What are they looking for here? South Africa, do they kick for touch? No, they don't. They are going to be tapping and continuing this onslaught. Tonga's defense walking up. He does the chip and chase from Ronald Brown. That is strategic, but it's just going to end up rolling too far for Brown. But the thing is, the way that Tonga walked up, it did seem like they were all flat-footed. And Ronald Brown, he saw that space in behind and went, well, if everyone's going from a standing start and I'm running that same way, could end up winning the foot race. Unfortunately, the ball did win in the end. It did manage to go dead. So now they will be having a scrum where that ball was kicked from for the Tongans there as well. Okay, Zane Davids in the front row. He's always dangerous, that is for sure. It's going to be Christy Grobola, JC Pretorius and Zane Davids. In the scrum for South Africa, they are a tough unit to move at the best of times. And now, Samasoni Asi about to feed this ball in. South African coach looking a little bit nervous, but at the end of the day, I think it will be a lot of nervous excitement 
for what is to come in the Commonwealth Games. They want the medal. They don't just want any medal, though. They want the nice, shiny gold one. To do that, they'll have to make sure they keep on playing well throughout this competition. Good pressure put there on Sione Tupo, the captain of Tonga. Now trying to use this one relatively slowly, just a bit more clinical, and also I need more KFC Tonga, that bro team. Says Nazi Williams. Now all that I want is KFC. Did you see the double downs of back, ladies and gentlemen? Sorry, that sounded like a weird sponsorship plug for KFC. But yeah, the double downs are back and they put gravy in them. Because why not? Now Ronald Brown, nice tackle made on him. By it was the number 13. Oseka not quite able to steal that one in the breakdown. Now JC Pretorius goes to the short side trying to step. And he stepped that many times. He almost stepped himself. Almost fell down. In the process, Ronald Brown back across to Grobola, who steps beautifully. He's going through, and Christy Grobola does go in for the second try of the match for South Africa. Still with half of this first half left, House of Crowds. The people show up in the evening, says Sebastian. They certainly did, I believe. They were expecting a sellout, and I would say it's about, I'd say 70% full at the moment. So I'm hoping there's still going to be more people tuning in later on. In fact, if they were expecting a sellout, there are a lot of empty seats there. So maybe it's a bigger stadium than they anticipated or less people there than they anticipated because there are a lot of blue seats still in the stands. So I would actually take down from my 70% and maybe say that it's about 50%, if not maybe less, unfortunately, which is a bit of a shame. I know that they would have loved to have a big crowd for this one. But saying that, I guess we are slightly later on in the evening session, so maybe a few people have gone home, try and beat the traffic. Maybe. <laughs> Christy Robola, his first tournament try in the Commonwealth Games and England's poor performance may have affected the attendance. That was beautifully done. Christy Robola takes the kickoff and this could be a quick try if he isn't dragged down. That is true. England actually struggled a bit against Sri Lanka and it was an interesting dynamic for that contest because the crowd, they wanted to cheer, of course, for England. But also it was that great watching the underdog Sri Lanka just fight with everything they had that the crowd almost turned against England. And sounded like there were more people going for Sri Lanka. That's brilliantly done by Ronald Brown, just stripping the ball from the Tongan. And now Christy Horobala will get the third try of the first half. Now I will mention 17-0 is where we found ourselves in the last game between Samoa and New Zealand. New Zealand went back to win that game 19 points to 17. So there's still half a chance that we may see some sort of massive comeback from the Tongans. But they're going to need something more than they've done so far. Throughout this contest, but Ronald Brown, nice cutout pass. Lobbing beautifully out to Christy Robola. And he did manage to score the try. Ronald Brown striking it from wide. Doesn't quite get it over. Still a minute left of this first half, though. Which does mean that South Africa could still get themselves one try, if not two, if they do score as quickly as they did just there. But JC Pretorius, they are showing him on the screen currently. He will be fired up. Now, Selvin Davids about to kick it off. It's gone for the 10 meter one. I don't think it quite traveled the 10 though, about 9.5, which does mean now Tonga do get this ball back on the halfway line. They will more than likely tap and go, try and keep this one alive and get themselves back into the contest. That is what New Zealand did. They scored right at the end of the first half and it changed it. Yeah, and they considered three tries against Sri Lanka, couldn't even get close to the try line against Tonga, says. It was there from Sebastian. Yeah, they just, they the game up against Samoa was so strange because as the home side, everyone was like, right, because it's at home, England are going to be next level. They're going to be fighting hard in a pool that is always going to be tough. But we never really saw it fire in that first match. And we didn't really see it up against Sri Lanka either. Yes, they did manage to get themselves a few points near the end of the game. Oh no, Ronald Brown has put that one down. Now with three seconds left, it is now going to be the scrum fee for Tonga. One last chance in this first half. But I mean, it's one of those weird ones that if they manage to beat New Zealand, it will just throw it in all kinds of circles. Because I guess tomorrow's a new day. England may come back from being down well and truly in this first day and find some sort of momentum heading into the second. Because all they need is for Sri Lanka to beat Samoa, which of course is a huge task for Sri Lanka. But if they can do that, they help out the English if they do beat New Zealand, that is. So it's quite a stretch, to be fair. It's Samus, but come on, Tonga. 
There's our RC about to feed the ball in Cantong and get themselves one try in this first half. Now, it is going to be a fed backwards. Tonga looking for a gap. It hasn't quite worked out. Great hands in the end because he almost put it down there for Pakalani. Good meterage. BMA now swears Wapi has to drag him down. Round the side here. Up he goes short side. Looking good. Tupo ball on the inside. This is nice work from Tonga. One meter short and he's gone over. And he is celebrating big time. Almost identical to what we saw in New Zealand versus Samoa. Samasoni RC has scored it. And now if they convert, it will be 17 points to 7 in this contest. And did poorly in London as well. And the seventh circuit home advantage means nothing when you've had Sebastian. And there's, oh yeah, some sides seem to love the home field. Some sides seem to not so much. And I think England, unfortunately, have fallen into that not so much category. Hey, what? Well, Hussies flicked that ball extremely hard. I hope everyone in the crowd were paying attention. Or someone might have gotten one to the chops. Yeah, but that is going to be halftime in this contest. 17 points to South Africa and Tonga. They will find themselves sitting there on five so they weren't able to get the conversion which is a big difference maker maybe as we move later on in this contest some very exciting rugby being played today we did see the uganda versus australia game a 12 all draw between those two teams was massive for the ugandans but they are a dangerous side they look very good but i think in that group it will be australia and kenya who do make their way through but uganda depending on the last result for kenya could certainly have half a chance. I believe Kenya were able to beat Jamaica quite comfortably, though, which did help them for the points differential. But the huddle of South Africa, they will be happy with how it is going for Lolo. I don't think will be too far off for the Tongans. He had an impact in that first game, and I think he might be able to have, or might be able to have an impact in this one. Now, I said an impact, even though Scotland were able to beat them quite comfortably. Little individual moments for players were something I did notice, and... That number three for the Tongans, whose name, of course, now I've forgotten for Lolo. That is the name that I said just before. He is one of those players. Do let me know, ladies and gentlemen, your end score prediction. And also, Fiji versus Canada. Do sides who have not had a defeat yet. Canada getting themselves a comfortable win over Wales. Fiji managing to get themselves a win over the Zambians. For that one, and also Nussie Williams, that said cheer. And there as well. I'm interested to see how Zambia up against... Who is Zambia playing? Zambia are taking on Wales. I think Zambia have got half a shot in that one, to be honest. I think it could be quite a good game. See how it does end up going. But now the coaches make their way off the field. They have done what they can do, having the chat to the boys. And now it is up to the players to see whether or not they can keep that South African streak rolling in the Birmingham Sevens. Okay, I don't speak Tongan, but I assume he said we're going to kick it long, mate. Maybe not. Daniel Tupo looks like he's set up for only about a 10-meter kick. What is going to happen here? No, it is kicking off long. Oh, maybe I do speak Tongan. Nicely taken by Selvin Davids inside of his own 22. Kicks it in behind and does the grubber. This is dangerous now. If the ball sits up, instead he just grubbers it again. It's going to be rolling towards the touchline. Selvin Davids waits for the bounce. It's a bit loose. And in the end, Zane Davids... Is the man who was able to jump upon it. Only 10 metres out now from the Tongan line. They aren't allowed to take it though. Selvin Davids back to Sawyer's Wapi. And South Africa, they've gone from only about 15 metres out from their line to now being able to score a try. Possibly that was Ford, I think. I think it did travel just slightly forward, but it is going to be the try for JC Pretorius. And it is going to be the try to South Africa. And also reminds me of the Warriors the last night's. Uh, and last night's home advantage, useless. And there, and uh, do you know when Samoa's next game is, please? Says Abio, I will get that information for you, mate. But it is later on tonight that it is going to be taking place New Zealand and Samoa time. One moment. We will go down to Samoa. I know that they are playing Sri Lanka in their next contest, but I will just get the exact time for you 10 12 p.m. is when that is going to be happening. And for uh, far better players than me, though. Says Anazi Williams in there. And yeah, they do seem to struggle a little bit, the Warriors. It was up against a Melbourne Storm who were on a losing streak also. So both sides, something to play for, but Melbourne Storm wanted it more. They'd have managed to get themselves the victory. I'm hoping to be up during the NRL today 
So we'll have to wait and see how we're going. We may still be asleep at the time that they are kicking off, but a couple of good games coming up. Cronella Sharks, they are going to be taking on the Rabbitohs in what is almost a 50-50 game in terms of the betting odds. West Tigers play the Broncos later on in the night, and then the first game, the Titans are taking on the Raiders at 5 p.m. But speaking of five, five minutes left in this contest now, Tonga throwing it in. Slap back onto the side of South Africa, who are leading 22 points to five. No matter what the scoreboard says, it is still five extra points for the South Africans, and the second half has been underway for two minutes. Christy Grobola gives it off to Ronald Brown, who has been prominent throughout this fixture. Now off into the hands of the big man, Makata, number one. He's cut through the defence, and that will be another try for South Africa. Runs it in for a nice, easy one between the sticks, and thanks, Zeus. Says Abby will no worries at all, mate, but we will be covering that one on the channel also. 10, 12 p.m. I think New Zealand have England in the game that has taken place after that one at 10.34. I want to say it would be, yeah, the men's sevens. Does, when does the men's sevens start? I believe it's about 9.40 or maybe, no, actually it will be a little bit earlier that it does take place. And that is round three. Then we move on to the quarterfinals. Uh, 9.28 is the first game. And then 9.50 is Australia versus Kenya. Hopefully, we can do that game, and we will see. I'd like to do one of the games of the NRL if I can, if I can squeeze it in somewhere while I am awake. I feel like that will be the way to go. Now, that kick has gone over. It is 29 points to five now, even though the scoreboard thinks that they are still having their halftime drinks. The full human has made his way out onto the field. Got quite a bit of heavy strapping on that left knee. And injuries are something we did see quite a bit of for Malaysia in their first contest. And that is something that both of these sides will be trying to avoid. But Malaysia, we're playing South Africa. They met that physicality head on. Slap back. It's a fair contest. Tonga have got this ball back. And it is the captain, Sione Tupo, has got it 40 metres out from his own line. Bit of a wrestle there in the breakdown as well from the number three for South Africa, James Murphy. Makata tries to get over it. Hasn't quite... Got that ball back. Tonga looking aggressive now in the way that they're playing. Finding the offload on the outside to Sione Tupo. Now trying to run straight through JT Pretorius. He's been dropping on his back and he's asking for the penalty for it. Now short ball to Tupo. Tries to step and it is going to be a penalty for the tip tackle. Now the thing is, normally for a tip tackle, if it's a penalty, normally it becomes a yellow card. Probably a little bit lucky there for South Africa now. Passing out the back line. Haven't seen too much of Halafihi throughout the first two matches, I will say. I'm trying to look to see whether or not he's out there. I do see that they have got four. Lolo has made his way out there, and that didn't make much of an impact because South Africa were able to get themselves a turnover in the breakdown. Now three minutes left in this contest. Vailea, the man who has penalised. Right, the full human. Looks like he is going to be kicking this one for touch, just slowing it down a little bit for the South African smart play. Because at the end of the day, there's no point risking giving Tonga a chance to get a couple more points back in. They want that points differential to be big, and that is exactly what South Africa will be doing. Two and a half minutes left. All human with the nice kick for touch, and now Ronald Brown will have the line-out throw. About to throw it in here for Brown, who has been very busy throughout this match up against the Tongans. Goes to the back, taken nicely by James Murphy. Now back to Brown. The old human goes over the top of his head, but it is going to be just a little knock on and also scoreboard is completely naked. It is. It is completely off the charts at the moment. It is confused. It is It is struggling, <laughs> I think is the best way of putting it. It still thinks it's half time. I guess that's the thing. With sevens, you would think they would be allowed this much time at half time to recover just because of how quick these guys play. But currently... It will be Scotland in number one, South Africa in number two if this game stays the way that it is. But maybe, just maybe, it could be South Africa number one. Those two sides, though, they will be playing off tomorrow night. That is a massive game because whoever wins that will manage to get themselves number one in the pool. Whoever loses will be number two. Okay, it is a free kick now for Tonga. Passing back across. It is now Halafihi. Passes off. To Fua Lolo and Samoa, or oh, sorry, and Tonga, just trying to find their way through this defensive line that doesn't seem like it's cracking too much under the pressure of the Tongans. It's another penalty in favour of South Africa in the breakdown, which is brilliant work from them. And now they will be able to kick this one into touch. They do want to slow it down once again. 
like I mentioned, there's no point risking anything in this contest, no point risking injury, anything along those lines. You don't want to be extra fatigued. You want to have a nice one minute to close out the day. Go back to your hotel, chill out, and just enjoy the atmosphere of the Birmingham Sevens that we have got at the Commonwealth Games. Plenty of sports have already taken place. I know that there was a silver medal for the Kiwis in the triathlon. It could have been a gold, I have heard, but the man took his helmet off too early, which I didn't actually realise was a thing, but he did get penalised for that. And because of it, the Englishman, the hometown boy, was able to get himself the gold medal. Now, nice run from the global. Oh, beautiful step, but I think he's been knocked unconscious, unfortunately. He does not look good at all, and I think this was a dangerous tackle. They will be going upstairs. This could be at least a yellow card for one of the Tongan players who put in a massive shot on Madlovu. Oh, that's a shoulder to the head. That's a red. Unfortunately for Ika, he will not be playing the next game, but neither will Madlovu because he got himself knocked out, unfortunately, there. That's a big shot. And Lovu, he just looks like he was concussed. Stretcher, please, is the call there. It looks like this game will have a little bit of a delay while we wait for Nudlovu to come to. They will be taking every precaution, sorry. Right, for me, I think there's going to be some sort of penalty, if not a card, just the way that he made contact with the head. Might be a little bit lucky if he stays out there. Still 30 seconds left just before the end of the game. I don't think we're going to see Mafundu Mdlovu back for another game of the sevens competition. He looks like more than likely concussion. Right, the referees are chatting now. What was the number? Sorry is the comment. That's never good because that means John Eka is going to get called over. I think this is at least this is at least a yellow. It has to probably be a red though. I don't think it could be any other color. <laughs> it was direct shoulder to the head and he went, is it? <laughs> so I don't think the Tongan really knew. He gives him a pat on the chest as well and does apologize to Nidlovu. Apologizes to the Springboks or Blitzbox side as well. I can't believe that after all this time, the scoreboard still hasn't worked out that the game has started for the second half. Because it's been a good, it's been at least seven minutes. But rear card for Tonga, 30 seconds left. It's not going to change the outcome of this game. But Lovu has changed the outcome of whether or not he will be playing throughout the rest of the sevens competition. But I will mention the next game that we are covering on the channel. It will be Fiji versus Canada. Wales versus Zambia will be kicking off first. But during that time, we'll be getting all set and rearing a go for that next contest. There's a lot of epicness coming up in the sevens. Other games that are of note that are happening later on tonight. Australia versus Kenya should be an exciting factor after Australia tied with the Ugandan men's side. Australia, or sorry, Samoa take on Sri Lanka in what will be a try-scoring fest for the Samoans. New Zealand play England, which should secure themselves top of the pool. Tonga, they will have Malaysia. So the two sides that will be two losses each. Someone will be getting a victory. South Africa versus Scotland. Canada versus Zambia. And then Fiji versus Wales to close it out. So of those games, we will be doing Australia, Kenya, Samoa, Sri Lanka, New Zealand, England. We might be doing Tonga, Malaysia, but more than likely we will be doing South Africa versus Scotland with a bit of build up and then Fiji versus Wales. And then of course, quarterfinals and everything else that has taken place because all of these sides, they still get more opportunities to play, which is absolutely awesome to see that it's not quite over for them yet. I'm oh, sorry, I'm a bit late listening to you. Game almost over. Looking forward to the next game. Says Rashad there. As I and yeah, there is going to be an exciting game taking place between Fiji and also Canada. That will be the next one that we are doing. But also alongside that, like I mentioned, Samoa versus Sri Lanka and Poway, New Zealand versus England. I think Poway is the one I'm most excited to see what happens in that final round for. Currently, Lovu still getting taken off the field. I hope it is a past HIA, uh, HIA for that man, and that there is no serious damage for himself as well. There are a few people dressed as flowers in the crowd there. I do see, but Mdlovu out to make his way out onto the field. Speaking of multi-sports that they were saying, there were about 15 flags 
on that woman's face and chest area. She did have Jamaica. She did have, I believe, Indonesia was there. Quite a few options for a couple Samoan still in attendance for this one. They would have loved to see what Brian Lima's side were doing earlier on up against New Zealand. Unfortunately, though, just missing out by the two points. But anyone wondering about how the tables sit as we currently stand in the sevens while we still wait for the player to be taken off the field? New Zealand, top of Paul a on six points, Samoa on four. They are sitting in second. Then for Paul B, Scotland are top of the pool. And then alongside that, it is going to be the South Africans who are sitting in second. Then Paul C is Fiji and Canada in the top two. They will be going head to head in just a very short moment. And then it is Kenya versus Australia as the final pool. And it is Kenya in number one and Australia in number two. Just looking through at the last two games of the schedule, Wales will be playing Zambia and Fiji will be playing Canada. I assume there'll be some sort of delay with when those games start just because of this extra time, but they are taking every precaution to make sure that Nudlobu is going to be all right. I believe he's very close to making his way off the field now. Yes, I've got him on the stretcher by the looks of it. Now, Fiji fans, they are still in attendance for this one. The crowd do clap for him as he is about to be taken off the field. Like I mentioned, speedy recovery for that man and hope it is nothing too serious. Still only 29 seconds left on the clock. It's a bit of an empty climax when you've got that little time. Uh, you literally got like five seconds and then you have to finish the game. But yeah, hopefully Mdlovo is going to be all right. Being taken off the field. And now South Africa, they won't be too far away from taking the quick tap and seeing if they can get themselves another try. All human about to take this quick tap. They just have to get all of the equipment off the field, such as the paramedics bags and everything along those lines. But now, the full human, 25 metres out, about to take this quick tap. And this game about to be back underway. Now the scoreboard has caught up during that break that we had, but the Wald Human now takes a quick tap. 25 seconds left, and it looks like he's in no hurry to find his way through that defensive line. It's going to be a mistake from a cutter there, and the scrum will go the way of the Tongans, and also rear car for the score machine, says Sam, and also who will first Samoa next, says Malua. So the next game will be up against Sri Lanka. That is at 10 past 10 p.m. New Zealand time tonight. So 10, 10 p.m. when that game has taken place between Samoa and Sri Lanka. So for me, Samoa, they have already pretty much made their way through to the quarterfinal. And it's just the case of them having to make their way past Sri Lanka, which they should be able to do relatively well. And then in the other game of Poe, it is New Zealand versus England. But Tonga, bit of a loose ball there. No time left on the clock. Looks like they want to try and get one last attack going, though points differential could be massive. And this ball, Halafihi. It's a bit of a step. He's going to be dragged down. No, he's not. Still going. Ronald Brown is just getting slung around on his back. Nicely dragged down in the end. Tonga, one last attack by the looks of it. Another rough load up into the hands of their number eight, which I believe in this game is Via Mithaho, I believe is the name. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Nice tackle made on him by Mullen. Duplessis straight over the ball for South Africa. More than likely, oh, I thought they would have tapped it and kicked it out just to avoid any injuries but it is now going to be Ronald Brown who has wrestled down round the side. The vault human wants to score one. This one will be for Mutlovu. And it is going to be the vault human has been able to get the final try of the match for South Africa. But 34 points to five with this kick going over. It will be 36 points to five. And then the next game that is taking place between Fiji and Canada it is going to be about 20 minutes away, ladies and gentlemen. But when it is happening, we will be providing the commentary on the channel as well. Malatonga next time. See you, Sam. Yeah, their last game. It will be up against Malaysia as the final challenger for the Tongans. That is tomorrow night that that one will be taking place. But Uman able to score that final try of the match. 36 points to five. A decent performance from South Africa. And I believe with that point differential... They will be, they needed to win this game by 34 points. They're just going to be missing it. So for now, they are in second in Pool A, or sorry, Pool B, and Scotland are still in first. But thank you all very much 
for tuning in. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you all for Fiji versus Canada in a short 20 minutes or so time.